Welcome to First Word from the Pastor's Son Study with the Reverend Dr. Mark Carter Pierce. Greetings and salutations, family. Welcome to First Word from the Pastor's Study. I am the Reverend Dr. Mark Carter Pierce, Senior Pastor and Founder of All Christ Love Ministries. We're glad that you were able to be here with us today, amen, as we embark on the fourth Sunday of January 2021, the fourth Sunday, amen. Um, what a week it has been. Um, I heard a collective sigh um, going across the country a few days ago. Now that the tyrant is gone, amen, I don't like to inject politics too much into this ministry, but I do have to tell the truth, amen, and the truth is that um, we're all feeling a little better today about what's taking place and what's about to take place. There's always going to be a naysayer, but what I did love is that the man hit the ground running on his very first day, just mere hours after being sworn in, he could have gone and partied the rest of the day away, but he went straight to his desk. How many have done that? Amen. Praise God. We're not going to be before you long today, but um, the message that we have for you, praise God, that God has put upon my heart, amen, is very much related to um, the situation in politics, because we were basically nervous up until the last minute. What is going wrong? What is going to happen that's going to change everything? Amen. Um, but God, <laughs> but God, yes, God has brought us through that storm. He's not, per se, going to allow us never to see a storm again, but he's put us in a better position. Amen. And with that, I'd like to come to you this morning from the book of Genesis. That would be the first the very first book of the Bible, amen, um, for you Bible aficionados out there. The first five books of the Bible are called the Law of Moses, or the Law, simply put. In the Jewish faith, the first five books are the Talmud, which is their holy book, amen. Um, the interesting thing about the book of Genesis, it has a lot of condensed history that's not focused on one particular person, but on many, where, for example, where Exodus um, has a lot of focus on Moses, uh, Genesis does not have that. Um, it tells the history of the beginning and how everything basically got started, amen. So with that, I would like to come to you today from the book of Genesis, chapter 18, verses 1 through 15, amen. Um, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. For those of you who have never watched the broadcast before, I'd just like to state that the New King James Version is my preferred version because it is the closest translation to the original King James. But what it does is it takes out the these, dies, and doists and replaces them with he, she, he, they, and does. So, you still get the thrust of what the scripture is saying. It's not diluted too much, but it's in an easier, easily digestible fashion. Amen. Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 15, and thus says the Lord, Then the word appeared to him, and him being Abraham, Then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth trees, of manner, as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread, that you may refresh your hearts. 
After that, you may pass by inasmuch as you have come to your servant. They said, Do as you have said. So Abraham went into the tent to Sarah and said, Quickly, make ready three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the, t- the, to the herd, took the tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, Here in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life, and behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Just so you know, this is God speaking at this time. This is God who asked, where is your wife? And it is God who is saying, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life, and behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you. According to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he, being God, said, No, but you did laugh. I'm going to ask you to just stand in the gap for just a quick moment as I approach the throne of grace. Merciful Father, again, I come before you in the name of Jesus, thanking and praising you for this day, O oh God, and another opportunity to do something right in your sight, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now, God, for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray that you sit me down, Father, and you stand up. Decrease me and increase you, none of me and all of you, Father. Instruct my mind and direct my vocal cords under the sand before these, your sheep. And transform me into the man that you would have me be in Christ Jesus, Father. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. I pray right now, Father, that you move through this digital realm like a mighty Russian wind today and just have your will. Let it be your will today, O oh God. Your will and not our will in the name of Jesus, Father. I pray that the word that comes forth from you today will not fall on deaf ears, God. Hallelujah, God. Let us not be just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Let this word be imbued into the heart and the mind of the listener, O oh God. And finally, Father, please, in the name of Jesus, Clean up this, your, your servant, O oh God. Pray me a clean heart and renew a right and steadfast spirit, O oh God, because it's me, it's me, it's me, who's standing in the need of prayer. As I give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise, it is in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus of Nazareth, I pray and say, Amen. <clears throat> so, God put this on my heart. I always ask God before I come before you. I, the days before I come before you, I always come to God and I say to him, God, please tell me what you want to say to these, your people. Let it be from you and not from me. Tell me what it is that you want to tell them. And God puts things on my heart and as he does, This is what comes forward. And as he put this on my heart last night, as a matter of fact, and showed me where this was going to go, 
اون از ما رو داره and if I would put a title to this text that title would be no stopping yes no stopping no stopping no stopping there's no stopping God there's no stopping him you need to get that into your head right now there's no stopping him let me be a little bit more succinct if I might or even better let me just break this down real quick for you see the problem is that if we are truly to believe that God is in control, we need to start by not putting him in a box. Let me explain how that works. And we do this subconsciously. We may not mean to do it, but we actually do do this. We put God in a box. We give God the same, somewhat of the same limitations that we have upon ourselves. That's what putting somebody in a box is. It's giving them the limitations or grouping them with others. I'll give you an example of that. In this world in which we live, we put people in boxes. Men, women, adults, children, whites, blacks, Mexicans, uh, 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 Swedish, um, even subsets, dark-skinned people, black people, Africans, Haitians, Jamaicans, uh, uh, white folks, uh, Jews, uh, Germans, French, Italians, Anglo-Saxons. We, put, we, we make too many boxes, but the bottom line is that God in His majesty moves this high and looks well looks down at this earth that He created and says, My children are men. He doesn't put any of us folks in separate boxes. He puts us in one box. And that box is my creation. The same box that holds the universe and everything there in there. So here is us. And subconsciously we have a tendency to give God limitations that he has none. God can't do this. Look at Sarah in the text. God, how God can give me a child when I have long past my childbearing age and then my body is old and I can no longer sustain a life within it. I have no ovaries. I have no ova. Uh, I, I'm, I'm 85 years old. My prime is past. And Abraham, good God Almighty, he's 110. How is he going to ever do something to produce a child? But see, Sarah put God in a box, amen. And this is the thing that we do. This is the question to our faith. Did Jesus not say to us, if you have the faith, of a mustard seed, you can tell a mountain to rise up and jump into the ocean, and it will do so. In case you're not aware of the size of a mustard seed, I would direct you to pick up a pencil and take that pencil and just tap it on a piece of paper. And that would be about the size of a mustard seed. It's about maybe one tenth the size of a sesame seed on the front of your big mac, amen. Yes, if you have that much faith, not many of us do. You know that I told you many times since way back we started on a Trust God campaign. And, and I want to report to you in my personal witness that it is true that he will do, he will make a way out of no way. If you put him first, if you trust him first, he will make a way out of nowhere. I'm here to tell you that today. But the first thing that we have to do is stop putting God into a limitation or putting him into a box and saying because it defies the very nature of what we know to be right, he can't do it. Does not Romans 12 and 2 tell us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds? so that we may know God's good and perfect will for our lives. Amen. The first part of that deal is, remember that I said this to you before, prayer does change things. It starts by changing us 
first. Amen. Then God can start to deal with us and work with us and enlighten us and challenge us and fix us. Amen. And fix that which is around us. You can't think. That if you were spending your life doing this nonsense, that nonsense, and a third nonsense, that you could just come to God today and say, Here, God, fix it. God has, you cannot come to God and ask Him for things when you're still involved in that stuff that offends Him. See, these are all hindrances to our having the proper idea that nothing is too hard for God that God is in control that we cannot put him in a box. All of these contrivances are part of what formulates this mindset and also breaks the power of God in our lives. But I stop by and tell you today that those things can change. It's not that hard. Those things can change. We have to stop putting God in a box. You know, I, I come to find that in life, uh, we learn through repetition, and you know? so I would challenge you today that whenever you think that God can't do it, stop yourself. Stop yourself and say, yes, yes, he can do it. Yes, 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 he can do it. You know, I, I hear a lot of Christians in and outside the church, and they're fond of saying, won't he do it? Won't he do it? But they doubt if he can do it. Why are they down in what they can do that if they have the audacity to say it? Are you lying to yourself? Are you lying to God? Are you lying to people? If you're going to say that, you must, you must believe it. Remember that in Hebrews 11 and 6, chapter, uh, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtain good testimony. When they got that good testimony, because they realize that faith is the key that unlocks the power of God in your life. So that God can move and move and handle his business within you. He can change you. He can make things happen around you. And he will change your world. He says in the 23rd Psalm, I will prepare a table before you and in the presence of your enemies. I, you are not, I know your head in all. Your cup runs over. He tells us this for this particular reason. It's very simple. It's a proof of what he can and will do. God, if you let him, notice I said, if you let him, because the problem is that half of the time we stop on our own blessing. We don't let God do what he's supposed to do because we don't allow him to respect the faith that he can go and do what he wants to do, what he needs to do, what he has to do for us. We stop on our own blessings with our disbelief of putting God in a box. But here's the thing, God is waiting to do for us, amen. He wants to do. But he's got to change us first. He's got to change our way of thinking. That's what we're trying to do this morning. We change our way of thinking a little bit and get God out of the box, amen, in your life. So that God can activate and bring you all the blessings that he has to bring you, amen, because he wants to bring them to you. Jesus said in Matthew 7, Now you being evil, give good gifts to your children. How much more will your father in heaven give to you, amen? Oh, 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 yeah, 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 God is real. I'm trying to tell you this morning. And all you got to do is get out of this mindset, amen. You got to stop putting God in the box. You see, when you stop putting God in the box, when you stop giving him limitations that you have or similar to the ones that you have, then God can move and react and there's just no stopping him when it does. Amen. I, have, I am a witness myself that he can make a way out of my way in the name of Jesus. Yes, he can. I have figured and figured and figured how was it possible. And the only reason that I can come up with is it was God. I couldn't figure it out because I have the limitations. I am in the box. I don't have the power to teach an eagle to fly or raise a mountain out of the ground. I don't have the power to make those things that separate bodies of land, amen, and populate them with living beings. I don't have these powers, and yet I wonder why I can't figure certain things out. I figure why, I try to wonder why I am the dummy, but the bottom line is this is who I am. I am not God. God, if, you know, it kills me. It kills me. It does. And 
I just find myself laughing when people come and I hear these stories about people that say the preacher came to them and said, I got something to tell you. I see keys and deeds and all kinds of things in your future. First of all, why would God give somebody else your mail? Secondly, if God wanted us to be as powerful as he, then we would not need him. But the bottom line is that we are not as powerful as he. And we do need him. And he is there for us because he loves us. He created us. We are not a threat to him. He loves us. He created us. And he wants us to have our best life. Our best life. He wants us to have our best life. I know I'm, you know, listen, my life is not perfect. I still have bills. I still have payments to make. I don't have everything that I want, but I do have everything that I require. He has made a way out of my way. I am alive. I may not be in the greatest of health, but I'm in better health than many, and I'm still walking around, amen. I may not have the house of the hill, but I do have a roof over my head and my work is up to date. I have gas and electricity in there. I have rain and water in my house. Yes, if I didn't have these things, I would not be able to come to you with this message today, but here we are in there. I have a vehicle outside that I can go outside and get in. I have money to buy gas for the full tank that I have in it. I have plenty of food in my refrigerator. Oh, I thank God for all these things, but I can tell you that many of them, I couldn't figure out how I was going to get them. Father, how am I going to start this ministry? How am I going to uh, 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 bring about sermons? How am I going to have Bible study? I could not figure these things out other than the ways that I was taught in this world, the things that I knew, or that I knew that I knew that I knew, but God. God came along and figured everything out for me. As to this day, some of these things I cannot figure out. I have no idea how he did it, but all I can tell you is he did it. And you know what? That is sufficient. That is sufficient. The apostle Paul went around with a thorn in his side and it caused some pain on a daily basis. He went to God and he said, God, can you remove the storm from my side? And God said, not for you, my grace is sufficient. We don't need an explanation from God on everything that he does or how he does. He is not accountable to us, for he made us, but rather we to him. Just know that he did it and it is good. Sometimes we don't like the way things turn out. Maybe we don't like the way things happen. Unless you put God in a box, that's the only reason you should have that question. God is the supreme, and if we did it, it is good, and we need to learn to accept that and keep it moving, plain and simple. But I stopped by to tell you today that there are so many things because there's no stopping God when he gets started. There's just no stopping, no stopping, no stopping, no stopping, no stopping. you got to pay attention today because this is very important. Get God out of the box. You gotta get him out of the box and you gotta let him go. You gotta believe in what he does. You say what you believe in what he says. There are times when you will prove that. What you gotta do is let God make it happen for you. Let him out of the box. Don't give him the limitations. You don't need to figure out why. You just gotta know what he did. Get God work in your life. Because when God works, he is unstoppable. Look at this story that we told you today from the scripture. Sarah laughed. She said she is old. She said she cannot have children anymore. Those days are over. She looked at Abraham. She said, Abraham, you're too old. Those days are going for you. You're not looking at your baby. Something's here. But God came along and said, wait a minute. Is anything too hard? For God, he said that, as did he not do, was there not born a child named Isaac, who by the way knew the after, while Sarah laughed at God, God is loving at Sarah, 
because he gave her a child, as he said he would. He gave her a child, who would be the father of many nations. He did what he said he was going to do. And then he said he would make it bits and pieces more. He brought them through. And now what about you? Are you going to die him? Are you going to listen to him? Are you going to believe him? Are you going to take away those blocks? Are you going to stop stepping on your own blessing? Are you going to take them out of the box? Are you going to stop putting them in the them? What do you want? Do you want the least or the greatest? You better believe in those promises. Because you said that you're above and not believe. You're ahead and not the tail. Yes, he said he would better leave. Well, I'll go to you. You better get rid of it. Stop doing what you've been doing. Change your mind and your heart. Because with God, there's no stopping. No stopping, no stopping, no stopping. With God, there's no stopping. You can do anything. Do anything. Have anything. As God knows it. But your God is met. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it's not easy. Because we used to do things the way the world has taught us to do. We're used to believing that we're in control and praise God uh, we control our own destiny so we need to talk these foolish lies we've been taught we control our own destiny that we make it happen and that's just not the case it's just not the case that's why some of us are stuck in mediocrity that's why some of us are not progressing or advancing. We just stuck. And it's never God. 